Hey everybody. Hello, hello. Uh, welcome back. Act two of Under Construction um, by Peter Honorati. Um, we have the uh, same cast with the addition of Herb Mendelson, who's playing Joe McClone. So it's I'm directing and um, Gina Costa is Antoinette. And Tom Alper is Anthony, uh, Jack Kaler's Uncle Philly, and Candy Chabuco is and uh, Aunt Millie. I'm going to give you guys a, a quick review of what Act One was about, and uh, so we can be up and running. It's 1984. It's Clifton, New Jersey, and the death of Anthony D'Antonio Sr. reunites Antoinette and Anthony Jr., the sister who moved away after college, and her brother, the one who chose to remain behind. This reunion of sorts opens the door to all kinds of unanswered questions concerning family, love, church, and the truth behind the unique way the family slices the pot roast. Their Aunt Millie and Uncle Philly, two curious fixtures in their family, hover over the funeral arrangements and the future. Frustrated with her brother's inability to question the world around him, Antoinette challenges him as they make a bet as to why the family cooks the roast with the ends cut off. Antoinette harbors a secret from her brother that both her Aunt Millie and Uncle Philly have told her to, quote, talk to him. And when at the end of Act One, Anthony inadvertently learns the truth from their family lawyer. So with about three pounds of leftover big ziti and with Aunt Millie's homemade, not bottled sauce and a stunned Anthony, we continue to Act Two. The spotless D'Antonio kitchen is a fucking mess. There are boxes on the kitchen table and clothes everywhere and some broken dishes in the sink. Their answering machine is beeping as Antoinette enters. Jesus Christ, you know I hate talking to these things. And you should get my brother's voice off of there. Where the hell are you? Anthony just left the goddamn house. I thought you was looking for him. Where the hell are you looking? Philly, I'm, listen, what the hell do you think I'm, you shut the hell up and give me a goddamn minute you're paying on my ass. Your Uncle Philly says Anthony slept in his goddamn truck at the garage last night. What the hell did you do? Did you tell him about the lawyer thing? And Aunt Teresa says she don't know nothing about the goddamn roast. And that's the way your grandmother made it. But she's going to call Aunt Wayne it down. God damn you, Philly. Um, hello, this is Joe McClone. Anthony, oh, I'm Antoinette. I spoke to Anthony last night and told him to tell you that as executor, I need you to sit, I need you to get some papers notarized before the will reading, okay? Please call me at the office. Hey, hey Tony, this is Jackie. Got a scrooge down here at half hour, trying to get loaded. Maybe you can come down and get them soon, huh? What do you think? There? Yeah? Nah, she ain't there! Well, hold them on the toilet, right? For a pussy. Get me what? Who? Yeah. Yeah, who's this? Hey, Johnny, is Jackie there? He's not there. He just called me 10 minutes ago. Yeah, okay, well, good for his wife. What? What? What do you mean, who is this? It's Antoinette. Yeah, I know, we've been looking all over for him. He didn't come home last night. No, not Jackie, you idiot, Anthony. No, I, I, is he all right? No, I will come and get him right now. What are you out of your freaking mind putting my brother in a car with that drunk? Oh my, I, how, all right, how long, how long? Well, good for Tommy, but why the hell is he down at your place if he doesn't drink anymore? What? Oh my, no, I am not calling from Pennsylvania, you brain surgeon. I am at the house. Oh wait, okay, I, I hear something. Yeah, th that's gotta be them now. I hear the garage. Okay, all right, goodbye, Johnny. No, no, abs no, goodbye. What the hell are you knocking for? What are you, what's he knocking, what are you knocking for? Not my house anymore. Anthony, stop, you're drunk and you're pissed off. I'm not drunk, I'm done being drunk. I'm, 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 I'm All sick. right, 
All right, listen, we should talk about this. Talk, I'm not talk. I, yeah. I, I, I just no, come, come, come here, come here. Here's some brioche. Here's some, here's some brioche. Take some. It's right here. What's it doing out there? I used it for the roast. It, what are you doing? What are you doing? I'm taking the brioche. No, you're supposed to take it with water. You stop yelling? I don't okay. care with water. It's much stronger this way. Well, it, says right, it says right there on the bottle to dissolve in a glass of water. I got plenty of water here. Look. Okay, stop. Cut it out. They mean just water, not water with doors. Now, what were you doing drinking scotch? That's my drink. Hey, how'd you know I was drinking? Because well, I called Johnny's and they told me you got ripped on two doers and water. That's right. Doers and water. That's my drink's drink. That your drink's? was Pop's drink. Hey, you know what? You think you know everything, don't you? Okay. <laughs> you know what? No, Anthony, I don't know everything, but I do know a few too many duels and waters is probably what killed Pop. Hey, don't you talk about him. Hey, Anthony, I know you're hurt, and I know why. All right. Um, can I get you something, some coffee? Yeah, make it some decaf, okay? You want the uh, Medigan or the Espresso? Uh -huh. Make it the Medigan. I don't have any decaf in my black coffee. All right. You know, Anthony, uh, what happened wait, 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 here? Hold on, hold on. Um, I, don't, I don't want you to make a big mess, all right? So uh, forget, never mind. All right, all right. I just want, I want to know what happened here because the house was clean this morning, and now Pop's clothes are thrown all over the place. What What's going on? Well, you wanted me to get rid of stuff, right? So, I mean, I had to get it out, didn't I? So you waited until I went. Uh, hey. You know, I was looking all over for you. You got to stop doing this. You got to stop acting like this. It's childish. Yeah, look who's talking there, Biscotti Cheeks. Oh, okay, well, I'm sorry, but that's what happens when I eat red meat. Now, shall we... Talk about why someone I know who never drinks more than a glass of wine with dinners went down to the tavern last night and just got completely- Hey, 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 don't talk to me like I'm one of your little students, okay? I can go to happy hour whenever I want. Oh, yeah, yeah, and just puke your guts out in Vernasky's car. Just do that. And those are your words, not mine. Now, um, can we talk about this executor? You know- uh, uh, Can we just talk? No, you always want to talk. Let's talk about this. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about the roast. Let's talk about the church. Let's you talk know what? Look at me. I don't want to talk. Look at me. Anthony, look at me. Mom's gone. Pop's gone. Who the hell are you going to talk to? Philly? No. I mean, I, I, I get enough of him at work. He's fucking useless for talking to. Okay. You and me, we used to talk all the time as kids. You know, that was before you, you grew up. I mean, what's the big deal here anyway, huh? The big deal is nothing gets resolved if we can't communicate with each other. Oh, come on, I don't believe that. How can you not believe in communication, Anthony? It's the, 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 it's the necessity of human nature. Yeah, you know, that's what everybody says, you know? But what they mean is convince, not communicate, all right? Everybody wants to win you over to all something. Right, don't stop. It's thinking. not always true, Anthony. Well, bullshit. I mean, look at you. you you're you not going to give this shit up until you convince me that we need to communicate. Now, am I right or wrong? No, no, no. You're not right. You're not right. Look, your feelings are hurt, and I want to apologize for, for not telling you, but I know that you'd be crushed by all this. And um, look, Pop must have had some reason for putting me in charge, and God only knows why. I don't even know. I didn't... Uh, I didn't ask for any of this, and it doesn't mean that Pop loved me more than he loves me. Yeah, I know people. that. I know how much Pop loved me. I'm just pissed because he never stops trying to, to make up for your big accident. What accident? Oh, come on. Like, you don't know? <laughs> no. Come on. The big accident. I don't know. What the, what the hell are you talking about? What accident? Well, I guess we're not communicating then, are we? Oh, uh, do not be a wise ass. Look, I said I don't feel good, all right? I'm in no mood to talk, all right? And especially about that. Okay, here. Some coffee. All right, thank you. <laughs> How 
is it? Yeah, it's good. It's just, uh, you know, you got to put a little more water in it to, to weaken it, you know, so. <laughs> Thank you. I will remember that next time. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. See, we're talking now. This is talking, sharing ideas. You teach me a little about the coffee and I teach you something. Yeah, about what? I don't know. What do you want to learn about? Right now? Yeah, right now. Yep. Nothing. You know, can, can I just put some more water in this I, so I can... I, no, we go can... ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. You, you're not going to yell at me for doing things my way? Nope. All right, then. You must really want to talk here. Yes, I do. And not to convince, to communicate. Uh, I'll tell you what. You help me pick up all these clothes here, and then we can start communicating. I love the, the way your mind works. Yeah, me too. So, um, you want to tell me about this dreaded accident that Pop needed to make up for? I, I can't believe you don't remember. I mean, it changed, changed your freaking life. Four years of high school, you're, you're begging Pop to work construction. Senior year, he finally lets you on the job. First day of work, what happens? Okay, of course I remember that accident. I mean, Anthony, I... I <laughs> well, that's the accident I'm talking about. Anthony, I got a brick in my head. I mean, I, it wasn't that bad. Yeah, how many stitches? I don't know, like six, I mean, look, if you say Pop made me the executor of his will because he blamed himself for a brick falling on my head over 20 years ago, is that what you're saying? I mean, that's absurd. It was an accident. Well, it wasn't the accident or the stitches or that concussion you got. It's what happened afterwards. You changed a lot. In what ways? What ways? Yeah. Are you kidding me? All right, Anthony. I got out of Clifton, I went to college, and that's what changed me. Not a brick in my head. Come on, Tony, I'm not talking geography here, all right? I mean, before you got that brick in the head, you did everything girls did. You had boyfriends, you went to the prom, home economics, you know, everything. Then after the brick, you know, nothing. I mean, you, you know, you start wearing those fat shoes and then, you know, flannel shirts and you start hanging around girls and uh with that girl what was her name candy uh, 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 uh she was what piece of candy she was oh god I'm gonna... candy i mean me and pop we knew you knew we knew right <laughs> and pop you always felt responsible for what happened to you so uh, what, what what's so funny anthony are you saying that you and Pop thought I became a lesbian because a brick fell on my head? No, I, I didn't, but Pop did. I mean, you know, he's no okay, dope. No, no, no you, you're right about that. This is amazing. You and Pop have answered one of the greatest questions on the minds of mankind throughout history. You know, you should publish your findings in the history of, uh, in, the, in the Journal of Science. Huh? Is that why all these years Pop never was angry about my lifestyle? No, he never got angry at you. Anthony, I love you very much, but that is, without question, the craziest thing I have ever heard. Hey, you know, you changed, okay? And that's what he thought. And I don't know what the hell is so funny here. <laughs> Are you kidding? My father spent 20 years of his life thinking about his daughter, thinking that his daughter turned into a lesbian because she got hit on the head with a brick. This is priceless. Now, didn't you ever try to talk him out of it? No, what for? It didn't matter. I mean, you went away anyway. No, I mean, but didn't you think that... No, I mean, of course. I, you know, I, I don't know. I, I didn't think. I mean... And what, what the hell do you think? I want to know what you think happened. I don't know what happened. I mean, I figured you just didn't meet the right guy. Or, I mean, how are we supposed to know what happened here? And why, why didn't you ask me? But why didn't you tell us? I mean, this ain't something you ask a person. Hey, Tony, are you really a dyke or was it the brick in the head? Okay, come on, please. This is ridiculous. This is exactly what I mean by communication. No, you know what? Just don't laugh at me and Pop, all right? We didn't know what was going on with you. We just knew that you everything changed after the brick. Okay, Anthony, what could I say then? We didn't even talk about sex in this house, let alone that. Everything was behind closed doors. Yeah, and what did you do? You took those doors and you moved to Pennsylvania where nobody, you know, could, uh, you know, see you, all right? Some communicator, you Oh, no, come on, come on. I, I took a job offer in Shimokin and I took it. I mean, 
you know what? You must think I'm still drunk or something, right? Because that is total bullshit. Because if you wanted to talk about being, a, you know, a, then you would have stayed here, stuck it in our faces, okay? But you weren't ready neither, right? It was easy. You know, Anthony, it is 20 years later, and I can't get you to think beyond your fourth grade catechism. I can't even get you out of your kitchen. How could I have ever thought to bring this up back then? Well, the fact is you didn't. No, the fact is you couldn't handle it. No, I think we did handle it. I mean, did, did, we, did we stop talking to you? No. Did we, did we stop treating you like family? No. no. Did you ever stop loving me? No, of course sakes. You're the one who went away. You left us. Hey, please. I moved to Pennsylvania. It was a couple of hours away. It's not another country. It's a three-hour drive, okay? One way, all right? So that's three hours up, three hours Three hours up, three hours up, each way, bang. You, you spend the whole, the whole half fucking day in the road. I mean, okay, so it was more, it, so it was a three hour drive road. that kept you from coming? Who kept you from coming? You know what, for someone who's so smart with books, you don't shit about people. Let me tell you something. Pop lived in this house for, for, for 30 years, right? That's less than 20 minutes away from the city where, where he's from. How many times did he go there? What does that have to do anything? Who counts that? I do, okay? 10 times, 10 fucking times. He's been, he's been there since he moved from the city. Okay, so he never went anywhere. That's your excuse? No, that's right. He didn't go anywhere. He went to the Eagles to play cards on Tuesday, went to Johnny's, then he went to uh, the, the Reservoir Tavern for a drink, and that's it, okay? So don't, don't make this personal, okay? It was about a three-hour drive. Yeah, and it was a three-hour drive for me. It was a three-hour drive for me, too. And to be what? To be treated like a freak? None of you ever really accepted me and Vinny. Well, you could love somebody without accepting, you know, what they do. I mean, it happens all the time. You know what? I'm going to tell you something. It's not about accepting what they do. If you love somebody, you accept who they are. No one here ever reached out to Vinny and me, but you and Pop, and that was just out of family duty. Hey, hey, hey. You, you want to know what's funny here? You go away for 20 years, and you think you know what people around here think? What do you know about me and Pop and duty, huh? I'm going to tell you what duty is. Do you just stick around for 20 years after mom dies and you watch pop cry every day about the girl whose locker he opened up in high school and you make sure he eats, you clean up after him in your spare time, all of your spare time. And that's duty and that is love. Great sakes, I feel like an old guinea washwoman here. Pop didn't ask for that. He didn't have to. Anthony, you deserve a lot of credit for taking care of Pop and running the business. And maybe I should have helped you more than I did. But you lived in a world where people accepted you and you did what they expected you to do in that world. Now, if you knew what it was like to come up here and listen and watch the reactions of all of those people we once looked up to, their poorly disguised contempt for me was too much. Sorry, it was too much, even for a three-hour drive. So the move to Pennsylvania was the perfect solution, the perfect world. You're telling me you're accepted in the world of Shemokin, wherever the hell it is? No, no, not totally, but I wasn't shunned by family who were supposed to love me. And I was defined by the person I was, a teacher, not by the one thing that people thought was wrong with me. And now you tell me. <laughs> <laughs> you tell me, one of the reasons you and Pop accepted me was not love, but guilt. You know what? You and he lived under the illusion that a brick was responsible for something that is completely natural. Well, I don't know about that. Two people same sex. Yeah, I'm not calling that natural. What did you say? You know what? I'm just, I'm not enjoying this, all right? The coffee and, you know, my head's still fucking hurting and I don't know, it's really bad. Oh my God. You're going gay. Uh, <laughs> the next day, matrimony, the kitchen is once again spotless. Anthony enters from the garage with a coat, hat, few large boxes, the automatic garage doors heard closing. Antoinette open, enters opposite with piles of clothes in a laundry basket. 
Oh. All right. Hey, uh, Anthony, why didn't you tell me that Vinny called and left a message? It's, uh, it's on the machine. Yeah, but I wouldn't have even known if I didn't check it myself. The light wasn't even flashing. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on here. If you're going to get up at this time of the day, you're going to have to check the machine for yourself. I mean, I, you know, I can't walk around here all morning you know, with that light going on, flashing, and that, that fucking beeping drives me crazy. So. Right. All right. All right. We got two piles here. These two piles, one for you and one for the Salvation Army. No, 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 give it to, give it to the church. Pop always said. Uh, all right, all right, the church, the church, right. Okay, so uh, <laughs> this pile, this pile is for, uh, this pile is for Anthony and this pile is for St. Anthony. Yeah. Oh, oh, uh, by the way, uh, Kathy just called while you were getting the box. Wait, 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 when? When did she call? So just, I, I, just now, I just told you. I mean, you were down the street. You were down the street, your house getting the box. And she said you can call her tonight. Tonight, she said, "Shit." Yeah. What? What is the big deal? She said she. You know, you could call her tonight. Big deal is she always wants me to call her right back. Well, Anthony, what's going on with you two? How come uh, Kathy didn't come to the wake? She came to the funeral mass, so you know, forget about it. You gonna refold my shit all the time? What? I'm not good enough? All right. All right. Can I, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Did you break up? That's your question? Yeah. You gonna answer me? Yeah. Is it yeah, you're gonna answer me, or yeah, you broke up? We had a boat. I told her, don't come to the wake, it's stupid. What happened? She didn't come to the wake. I thought you were gonna marry her. You know, I changed my mind. You know, can we just finish this? Oh, what's the matter? She didn't make the good sauce? Nah. Uh, funny. No, you're very funny. You should be on the Johnny Carson show. You'll be the, uh, the lesbo comic. Don't say that. It's not nice. So uh, you want to tell me what happened? Oh, you mean like communicate again? Yeah. No. Okay, Jesus, this is like a court case. No what? No, I, I, I don't want to talk about what happened. I don't know what happened. I don't want to communicate. I just want to fold. Okay, you know what? Uh, <laughs> I don't know how you can go out with a girl for what, four years, break up, and not know what happened. Oh my God, we, we really gonna have to talk about this, huh? Yeah, Anthony, Anthony, look at me. I'm all you got. Who are you gonna talk to? Those idiots down at Johnny's Tavern who let you get sick on doers and water, hmm? You know, it ain't easy for me. I don't tell my problems to nobody. Anybody. Anybody? Well, you should try it sometime. You, you can't just try it, Tony. I mean, you could try Brussels sprouts, but not that. Come on. Yeah, I, I know, Anthony. I know you're afraid of that, but sometimes it's okay. When? Uh, now. Now? You know what? Hey, you want this? Or maybe Vinny, huh? No, no, no. Mm -hmm. huh? Huh? Hey, hey, come on. Uh, go get it. Come on. Anthony, I wish you would talk to me. Please talk to me. You know, maybe you should start teaching psychology instead of English if you're so interested in everybody's problems. No, I'm not interested in people's problems. I'm interested in your problems. Is that so hard to understand? I am just trying to help you. Come on, you can't understand, you're a woman. I mean, you are the woman. Uh... Yeah. All right, you talk to, uh, you talk about Kathy down at Johnny's? Of course. And, uh, okay, then let's make believe we're at Johnny's. Huh? Do this, yeah, come on. 
This is good. Go over there, come back in and make believe this is Johnny's. Hey guys, hey Johnny. Hey, what the fuck you doing to Johnny's, Tony, huh? You better go home and Pop's gonna kick your ass. Oh, hey, come on, Anthony, I'm trying to do something. Now go back over there, go over there, start over. Oh, come on, Tony, why would you play these games? Now come on, come on, come on, we're at Johnny's, we're at Johnny's. All right, all right. All right, all right, all right. All right. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hey, Johnny, give me a couple of Sambucas. Hey, Anthony. Hey, what are, hey, is that, is, what are you doing? Is that, is that Cobby you doing? Yeah, it's Cobby. Is that good? That's good. Really good. <laughs> Except Cobby would say, um, he'd say, give me some bookies, a couple bookies. Okay, okay, okay. I got it, I got it. Hey, Johnny, give me a couple of bookies. Hey, Anthony. Hey, fuck you, Cobby. How's your fucking mother doing, huh? Come here, come here, come here. Get over here, get over here, huh? What's the matter? You don't want to play, huh? You don't want to yeah. be at Johnny's anymore? All right, all right, we're not at Johnny's anymore, okay? We're not at Johnny's anymore. Right. I didn't want to go to Johnny's. This is, you wanted to go okay. to Johnny's. All right, all right, look, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. I'm just going to ask you a few questions, okay? Is that all right? What, I got an answer? Yeah, Ant Anthony, that's the point. All right, but then I get to ask you some questions. All right, that's fair. That's fair. All right. Do you love Kathy? Of course. What are we talking about here? Okay, good. Does does Kathy love you? You sleep together? Whoa, whoa, whoa! That's like three fucking questions here. Right? What's it gonna be my turn? Okay, just answer, then you can ask. Yeah. Yeah. What? Yeah, to both. They're all. Th hey, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, what the fuck? Come all on. Right, all right, take it easy. Just go ahead. Ask me a question. Three. I get three questions. Well, go ahead. All right. <clears throat> Miss, Ms. D. D. Antonio, mm -hmm. are you now, and have you ever been a a dyke lesbian? Yes, I have always been a dyke lesbian. Yes. That's it. I got, I'm gonna go clean the bathroom. Oh come on! You got two more questions. No, no, I, I, I can't. What's the matter? How can you say it just like that? Because Anthony, you just asked me. Yeah, I know, but you answered me. Well, that's because I love you, Anthony, and I always wanted to be truthful with you, and I would hope you always want to be truthful with me. Yeah, but always? I mean, you, you always were... Yeah. I mean, who knows what always means, right? But I knew before I had the words for it, I always felt different. Mommy knew. What? Yep, Mommy knew. She told you she knew? No. No, but she always worried that I, what would happen to me if I didn't get married and who would, who would take care of me. And, uh, you know, and she died before I got the chance to tell her that I knew that she knew. I mean, I never got to tell her not to worry that I was going to be okay. So it really had nothing to do with the brick? Oh, God. Is that a question? Because that's number three. No, it's not really a question. It's more of a clarification. Anyway, you just asked me another question. All right, you still have one question. One more question. I got two. Uh, two. Now you go ahead. Okay. Why didn't you and Kathy get married? Kids. Kids? And yeah, she didn't want to have them. And after four years, you didn't know this? I knew, I knew. Well, then why the hell did you let, why the hell did you let it go on for so long? Why? Because I loved her and she lied to me. How did she lie to you? That's another question, all right? And you're getting ahead of yourself. All right, let me think here. Yeah. Okay. She made me think that all the time she was changing her mind about having kids. Because whenever the subject was broached and... Broached? Oh, what, I can't use your, your kind of words? Uh, go ahead. Yeah, no, it's good. It's good. It's good. Go ahead. Okay, so whenever the subject was, came up, she'd say that she never wanted to have kids, but if she wanted to have them, then it would be with me. All right, then why didn't you ask her for a yes or no answer? Didn't you hear what I just told you? I said I loved her, and you know, I didn't want to fuck it up. And that's sweet, Anthony. It really is. I know you love her, but I think you would make a good husband with or without kids. Yeah, but you know, my feeling is you, you, you can't really push something like that. Very true. 
Very true. I mean, I figured she got to take a little while. She's going to let her learn about me, where I come from, the family. All right. All right. That, that's the trouble right there. <laughs> and then all the things that make me, you know, what I am. All right. Then, and w which, is, which is what? Which is good. I mean, mostly, right? I mean, because I feel if the good is more than the bad, then she could see that we could have a beautiful life together as a family. But I wanted it to be her decision, not for me, not for nobody, but for her. So it took you four years to ask her, uh, what happened? Uh, we had a huge fight. Why? Because she asked me why I wanted to have them. That's a fair question, Anthony. Hey, oh, come on, Tony. You ever try and come up with a reason to want to wanna have kids? See, I can't even talk to you. Oh, wh why? Because I don't tell you you're right? Give me a good reason to have kids. Evolution. Evolution. Oh, yeah. Listen, two people fall in love, get married, have kids. When they have kids, they fall in love all over again. Because now as a mother and a father, they get to see a whole new kind of person in each other that they never would have seen if they didn't have, you know, kids. So then they take the best parts of both of them and they put it into their kids, you know, so it makes them grow up better than how they were. Bang, evolution. Well, it's... <laughs> It's not exactly Darwin, but it's not bad. You see, that's your problem. Right there. What problem? What? What? What problem? Person tells you how they feel, and I open up, and then you, you, you make a fucking joke or something. Or something. See? Okay, all I'm saying is your theory of evolution is sweet and nice, but it's not a logical reason to have kids. No. Logic? What has logic got to do with it? You ever try and come, with, come up with a logical reason to have kids? Kids ain't logical, all right? Now I know why Pop never wanted to talk to you. Hey, you know, Pop, I hate, Pop hated to talk to me because I told him what's what. I didn't take his bullshit as hey, gospel. He didn't even know how to have a conversation. So don't, don't talk about him like that. Oh, he only knew how to tell people what to do, Anthony. I said don't talk about him like that. It's too soon. You know, as a matter of fact, Pop probably gave you this idea, not uh, uh, the, this reason to have kids, this whole evolution shit. You know, what the hell do you even know about kids, huh? You can't even have them. What the hell does that mean? It means that even if you like men, <laughs> you're too old. I mean, you, you dried up already. That is disgusting. You look at me. Look at me, Anthony. You talk to your sister like that? I'm sorry. Okay, I, I, I'm, so, I, I'm sorry. I think we can uh, finish the rest of this later. Jesus, I said I was sorry. I said I was sorry. Uh, you know, this has been fun. <laughs> we'll have to do this more often. Yeah, I feel much closer too. Holy orders. The kitchen is in perfect order. A last rites kit with a crucifix and two candles sit at the centerpiece of the extended kitchen table. Ah, motherfucker! Mother's cunt. Did Damn. you say? What? What did you? What did you? I, I, I know what you said. Well, the, what are you asking me for, huh? Anthony, I heard you. Well, if you heard me, then, you know. I, I, you, you know, it's not even worth the discussion. What, what's with the shrine on the table? It's, a, it's, not a, it's not a shrine. It's an extreme unction kit. Um, Mom and Pop got it from the, the church gift, gift shop. Okay, Anthony, this is a will reading. It's not an exorcism. Yeah, I know. It, it's, not, it's not for exorcisms, you pagan. It's, 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 for, it's for last rites. You know, Pop had last rites in the hospital. That's right. So that's why we, we, you know, we can't use this. And it was Mom and Pop's, and I, I, and I ain't going to use it. You're a pagan, so... The outside garage door open. opener is heard. Oh, who's that? It's probably Millie and Philly. You know, they got one of the uh, openers themselves. They have a garage door open at a pop's house. Why? What? She's a pop's sister. Come on. 
Anthony, I wouldn't trust Millie. She can come in here anytime she wants and go through anything and, you know, with a little pause and. Come on. That's, like, that's your hand. What? Come on. what do you want from me, Anthony? Oh, 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 Millie, 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 do not move. Stay right, stay right Don't there. Don't you fucking broom me. Millie? The kid clean the floor, and you gotta and you gotta do that now. Please, just please take off your shoe. Your yeah, shoe, yeah, yeah. just please. Right. Yeah, everyone, just please sit down because uh, McClone will be here in any minute. Yeah. Oh, that's nice of him to come over here and do this. Well, for Christ's sake, Philly, we're paying for him. No, no, Millie, we're paying him. By the way, Aunt Lena called, says she don't know nothing about no goddamn roast. Since she said she ain't had a piece of meat since she moved to Florida. You know, it's hot there. I, I guess you don't pass it so well. Oh, okay, Millie, you can stop. Thank stop. No, well, you asked. You asked. Lena says she's going to call Claire Nardone. Your grandma Julia and her used to share a house on Arthur Avenue back when uh, when they first came from Mitley. Oh, shit, that's McClone. Hold on, guys. I'll, I'll get that. Hey, Joe, hold on. I got to take off the weather stripping. Hey, yeah, 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 that's good. I need you to go around to the garage. All right, Anthony, if you knew he was coming, why in God's name didn't you take off the friggin' weather stripping before, off the door? Come on. Who uses the front door? Oh my God, this is the twilight zone. Well, at least we don't mistreat our bathroom fixtures and leave them full of scum. Anthony? Hey, don't look at me, I ain't say nothing. All right. Do you people have anything better to do with your lives than scum scout in your relatives' houses and decapitating a roast? Damn it, I told him to come oh. around. All right, hold on, guys. I, I, I'll get it. You know what? You need to show a little more respect, Antoinette. You should have told your brother you knew about the executive thing. I, I'm just trying to help, you know? You know, no, no. Okay. And I just think I'm doing the best for my family, Millie. So you take care of yours. All right. I, I, I'm sorry, Joe. I need go go back around to the garage then, okay? Oh God. God, God, yeah, damn. So, somebody give me a give me a, a an opener so I can open the garage for Christ. Thank you. Thanks. Oh Jesus Christ. Hiya, hiya, Joe. Come on in. Have a seat. Uh, you want to broom me first? <laughs> no, no, come on in. It's a good thing you're not charging us by the hour here. Ha. Ah. Ha. Ah. Um, could you um, put out the votives? I'm uh, the candles. I'm allergic. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, sure. I mean, you're the boss. You're calling the shots. <sighs> Thank you all for coming. No, Joe. Thank you. Okay. Um, well, the whole thing is pretty simple. All I, I have some copies here, and um, well, I really don't have to read it to you. No, read it. Well, what the hell? I mean, he's here, ain't he? Millie, he doesn't have to read it. Oh yeah, listen to you. Listen to you. Hey, don't you start reducing people to objects. I won't stand for it. Yeah, well, he's my brother. My he's what? my brother. What the hell does that have to do with anything? A lot. Could, could, he's could my everybody, brother. Could everybody please keep quiet for a minute? Oh, Philly, take it easy. It's okay. Uh, I mean, let the guy do his job, for Christ's sake. Well, you better curb your tongue or I will deal with you when you get home. Oh, oh what are you going to do? Hold out on your sexual favors, please? Philly. Folks, <laughs> I, I do have another appointment in about a half an hour. An hour. Oh, uh, yeah, and he never expected to take 15 minutes to get in the house. All right, all right. Joe, you said you had copies. Yes, I do, but um, your father did ask me to try to read them for you. I mean, I normally never do that, but... Oh, oh just, just go ahead and read it, please. All right, well, um, oh, where are my reading glasses? No. That's okay, I got some. I got, um, hold on one second. I got one yeah. second. I got really? 2.0s, 2.5s. Uh, 2.0 is good. Two point outs. Okay. Here you go. Ah, nice, nice. All right. Um, let's see now. Okay. Bye, I Anthony. Blah 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 blah. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on, Joe. Can what? you with this blah 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 shit? Can't you say, at least say Pop's full name and use the blah 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 for the legal shit? 
okay, I'm sorry, it just makes it go a little faster and the uh, blah, 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 so legal shit is the most important part of the document. Um, okay, here we go. <clears throat> I, Anthony Angelo D'Antonio, resident of Clifton, county of Passaic, in the state of New Jersey, being of sound mind, do make and declare this to be my last will and testament, expressly revoking all my prior wills and codicils um, at the time that they were made. I appoint Antoinette Angela D'Antonio as personal representative this in my last will and testament and provide that if uh, the personal representative is a, unable or unwilling to serve, then I appoint Anthony and uh, D'Antonio, Armando D'Antonio to as the alternate personal representative. Big mistake. What? Is there a problem? Well, yeah, he should, ne yeah. He should never have done that. I, I thought I was, I was the executor. Yes, but this document has been updated six months ago. Big mistake. Okay, who's the witness? Who's the witness? Um, Alfonso Diacardi. Wait a minute, hold on, hold on here. Something's wrong. Pop's only known Al two years, all right, since they, they became partners. And why would he do this only six months ago? Apparently he trusted Mr. Diacardi. May I continue? What, he didn't trust me? Hey, would, would answer, answer me. Would, would, would answer me. Would everyone, including you, shut up and let the man do his job? Thank you, Antoinette. My personal representative shall be authorized to carry out all provisions of the will and pay my just debts and obligations and funeral expenses. Wait, just wait, wait. Do you have a problem, Anthony? I do. Antoinette and I discussed this already when it happened. It's not uncommon for people to update their wills. Jesus Christ, Tony, you knew for six months and you oh. never told me about this? Exactly, exactly, Anthony. Pop asked me not to say anything. That's bullshit. Will you please shut up? Hey, listen, you. Hey, you listen to me. What? What? You, you know what I'm saying. You broke your father's heart with heart with the what? Say it. Say it. Don't make me say it because I'm a lady. If you're a lady, then the woods are full of them. Hey, hey, Tony Millie. Come hey, on. everybody shut the fuck up. Whoa. Philly. What? Just, just shut up, all of you. I'm, I'm going to say something here. I, I can't stand this constant bickering. You, you people never shut up. It, it must be in your fucking DNA over here. Yes, the fucking mouse roars. Uh, see? God damn it. See? That's what I mean. You, you want to know why your old man rewrote the will? Well, I'll tell you. Because he knew he was going to die. What? Yeah, what? that's right. He knew and he... He wanted to make sure that everything was up to date and in order because he knew that all he used would make a fucking mess if he didn't have specific instructions. What do you mean he knew? The doctor said his fucking heart stopped. Yeah, yeah. His heart stopped because of the cancer. What Your the father fuck? had cancer. What the fuck are you talking about? How do you know this? What, why the hell would he tell you? and not his own sister. He didn't tell any of us, Millie. It's not about you. I didn't ask uh, yeah, 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 you, you, you wanna know why he told me? Because he wanted it to be a secret. And I'm such a fucking mouse in this family. He knew I'd never get a word in edgewise. And I couldn't say anything even if I wanted to. That's bullshit. Me and Pop, we had no secrets between us. Oh, really? Really no secrets? What about the executor over there with the fat shoes and the flannel shirt? Right, that's it. I have had it with you, you miserable, over-medicated cow. I have had it. Now, you've lived off my father's business for 40 years, and you have the nerve. I lived off of Grandpa Tony's business that he left to me and your father, and I lived off the hard work my husband has done in that business, you goddamn little queer. You know what? The word is lesbian. Or if you prefer, it is dyke. And oh my God, Millie, it is hilarious. You are so stupid. You are too stupid to even insult someone. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Well, just everyone just stop for a second, okay? My father had cancer. And I want to know why he didn't say something. I bet I can answer that. How so, Joe? Well, look at you people. If I had cancer and had six months to live, 
I don't think that I would want to hear a version of what's going on in this room. You people sound like you hate each other. I wouldn't want to hear that kind of hatred all around me when I was about to die. You know, that, that's not hate, Joe. What is it then? You're right. It's probably hate. Uh -huh. I'm just trying to help. No, I don't hate nobody. Anybody. Anybody. I don't. Anthony, uh, where did your father go this whole last year on, on, on Fridays? To the Eagles to play cards. During the day? Yeah. Uh, but Tuesday was always card night for him. So? Uh, he wasn't playing cards. He, he went for chemo down to St. Clair's Hospital. Bullshit. Huh. Anthony, did you go to the Eagles? No, how could I? I, I was at work and... Pop started to go to Eagles on Fridays because I, I told him he should, you know, start taking some more time off. Actually, Anthony, it, it was your father's idea to take more time off. I, I remember the conversation. Well, I only have about 20 minutes left, so um, I'm going to leave the copies. Sit down. And sit, sit down. Sit down. May I uh, begin with the bequests? Yeah, yeah, get to the, 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 the be, uh, bequests. Be. Shut up. Hey, please. Please, uh -huh. I direct that after the payment of all my just debts, my property be bequeathed in the manner of the following. The residence and real estate at 1232 Birch Street, Clifton, New Jersey, and all the contents therein to my children, Antoinette and Anthony D'Antonio. With the assets of the D'Antonio construction, I, I have this one provision that they sell the property within one year of my death, or it will transfer to the assets of D'Antonio Construction. I further direct that my share of the partnership in D'Antonio Construction, namely 70% flow directly to my aforementioned children pursuant to the- What, what, what? Pursuant Christ. to- Christ. What, wait, what, what the hell, wait, wait, what the hell is this all about? That was 6040 when your grandpa gave it over to us. Now, where the hell did my 40% go? I told you, God damn it, but you just wouldn't oh, listen. Philly, you knew about this. I, I didn't know shit. All, all I know is what's on the books. Oh, God. Pursuant to. It's totally, it is totally fucking illegal. It's not, Mel. Up yours, Philly. I had 40% by your participation in my father's business. Yeah, but you're not listening to me. Listen to me, I'm telling you something here. Pursuant to the attached accounting. Listen, this ledger covers 20 years of activity of El Emilina Emilia Di Giacopo and Anthony Angelo D'Antonio, principal partners in D'Antonio Construction. Drawing upon the resources of these assets of the said partnership, in summary, your brother has kept a strict accounting of the value of the massive amounts of work done in your favor and to your home on, in the condo in Wildwood. It reveals that your brother having not used these resources to the same extent is owed the value of an additional 10% share in the company. God damn Philly, that rotten Dirty son of a bitch. Hey, 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 God damn it, Millie. Get out, you sport your girl. Get out. You get out of this house. Don't you dare, you little shit. Anthony, you're going to let her talk to your aunt like that? What kind of man are you? You know, you're right, Millie. Tony, I Thank need... you. Thank you. Okay, I'll handle this. Tony, please calm down, all right? You're way too smart for this. Aunt Millie, get the fuck out of here. Millie, do you hear how they're talking to me? I'm just trying to help. You know what? I don't need this shit. Uh, kids, I don't need it. Kids, please. Come on now. Let's, uh, let's uh, just settle down here. No, no, no. Like, Uncle Philly. Uncle Philly, I need you to take her home, all right? This is totally my fault. I never should have invited you to. God damn. Yo, is, is this all legal? Of course. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. As long as the accounting is fair. Yeah, it is. I, I, I did the work on the properties. Okay. Joe, send them their copies. Mail it to them. We're done here. What kind of kids are you? You're not the kids I knew. No, we're not, Millie, and I can't tell you how happy that makes me. 
yeah, you know what? Why don't you go back to the sticks with your other queer? Why don't you just go do that? You know what? You forgot the big ziti with the bottled sauce. Fuck you, Anthony, you little shit. Come on, Tony, why do you do that? I, I gotta live here with these people. I'm, sorry. I'm so sorry, I cannot hold my tongue around her. I can't. Uh, I, I, I got to go. No, no, I, no I, Philly, I, Philly, you could, you, could, you could stay if you want. You want me to stay? Well, not if you don't want. Uh, I want to stay, but. Well, if you want to stay for you, you could stay for you. But if you want to stay for me, don't stay. Yeah. Well, uh, oh. I, 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 I better oh, go my. take care of her. Yeah. 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 Okay, Phil, you're right. All right. Good okay, then, then I'll go. All right. But, bye, Philly. Goodbye. Well, um, I hadn't counted on this morning being so therapeutic. Uh, I guess that's it, huh, Joe? Well, that was all the legal shit. Um, there's just one final comment. Would you two care to sit down? Actually, I gotta go clean the mat where Millie just okay, you, Anthony, sit down, sit down. Is this gonna take long, Joe? No, no, it's just a comment, like which your father did about the uh, sale of the house. It has no legal shit. Attached. All right, already with the legal shit, Joe. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm sorry. Me too. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> I was starting to get into the fighting a bit. Please, just please read it, Joe. Yeah. Yes. Here goes. Um, dear kids, I assume you know by now about the cancer. I just didn't want to get everybody crazy telling you anything because I telling everyone, you know, see, I had to tell Philly because he needed to see the books and I knew that he wasn't, he wouldn't say anything. He never does. I want you to sell the house because I feel it's holding you back. I'm sorry, Anthony, but I think it's time that you moved up the street to your own house and kicked that freeloader Mike Coletti out. I knew if I made you executor, that you would stay in the house till you die. Antoinette, you're my oldest and you, you really should be the executor, even though you went away. But I want you to know that I love you and that I'm very, very sorry about the accident that you had on the job and what happened after. So please, both of you, do what I ask and don't fight anymore. Mm -hmm. I don't know what's gonna happen, but I think I'm probably gonna miss you. Signed, Pop. Well, that's very interesting. Thank you, Joe. Uh, what's your fee for doing this? Uh, you know, your father was okay. He paved my driveway 20 years ago and there's not a crack. I get uh, uh, $500 for the whole thing. It was not a crack because See, they don't, they don't make asphalt the way they used to. I mean, nowadays, you know. Joe, you, you know what, uh, Joe, don't you have another appointment to get to? Oh, yeah, yeah, thanks. Joe, Joe, Joe. Oh, jeez, oh, jeez, I forgot. Oh. I forgot about the weather stripping. Um, oh, that's right. Bye, bye, bye. So I'll see you, kids. And by the way, um, listen, my, my brother-in-law has got a real estate agency in Boonton, in case you need somebody. I, I don't like the guy, but... Um, yeah, He's yeah. good at what he does. Yeah, okay, Joe, we'll, we'll let you know. Take care. You want some coffee? Oh, gosh, yeah, why not? It's good you didn't get a chance to serve it. You mean because of Millie? No, me. I might have actually thrown it at her. You know what? Thank you. I, uh, I got a little surprise for you. Oh my God. Palazzo's, is it? Is yeah, it really? Palazzo's creme buns. <laughs> You're kidding. I don't kid about crumb bones. You know that. Oh my! Is it? Is this why? Is this why you were warming up the truck at six at six o'clock this morning? Yeah, I mean, I I uh, I got them for you. Yeah, okay, go ahead, have them. Good for you. Oh my God! You don't want any. What are you gonna eat them all? 
You just said. No, but I got a whole box. Is <laughs> you know, Palacos is the only crumb buns that are mostly crumbs and very little buns. I mean, Anthony, see the crumbs are so large and they have this perfect texture and sweetness and it's like they're so light and crunchy on the outside, but they're so dense and cakey on the inside and the powdered sugar, I mean, look at that. Look at that powdered sugar. And every bite, mm, every bite. Whoa, 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 you don't have to tell me, I live here. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> but I'm not gonna be living here a year from now, am I? You know, we could go against, we could go against Pop's orders and give the house to the company. Then you could, you know, pay rent to Millie and Philly. No, no way. I mean, that's not going to happen. I mean, and anyway, I, I haven't been that comfortable here for a while, even though no matter how nice it is. Oh, Jesus, Anthony, it's a seller after all. I know, but that ain't it. I mean, I don't really mind that. It's just, you know, I've been getting worried about mold and shit after they discovered it. And so... Come on, Anthony, the way you disinfect and clean, there isn't a mold or, or a spore that could survive in the galaxy that could survive in here. Mm. Tony, mm. I gotta ask you something. Yeah. Did you not love Pop at all? I mean, that's a terrible thing to ask me. Of course I love Pop. Now, how can you not sad like I am? I am sad, Anthony, but not like you. I mean, you got to remember, for whatever reason, I've been away from this for a long time. And I mean, my world goes far beyond Clifton in a lot of ways. And it's not, calm down, it's not to say I'm smarter or better than anybody else. It's just that I have a lot more things to think about when, you know, when I consider what's important. Pop dying's not important, huh? I didn't say that, but don't forget, I didn't live here for these 20 odd years breathing in the asphalt and the concrete the way you did with Pop. I was like, you so did So what are you saying? There's something wrong with me then? God, Jesus, God, no, there you go. Did I say anything about something being wrong with you? No. No, what I'm saying is there's different things that are important to different people as a function of their experiences in life. Yeah, but family is always important. Yeah, of course it is. But family should not make you sacrifice your individuality and keep you from becoming your own person and maybe even building a family of your own. I'm my own person. Jesus, Anthony, you think for a minute, you can't get more than two sentences out without mentioning Pop. You live in his house. Well, I, I got a house up the street. Oh, Jesus, li you live in Pops. Well, I mean, don't you think you see things the way you do because you have to? Meaning what? Well, not for nothing, but you're telling me that you felt different all the time about you being a, you, you know, you know. Yes, I know. So ain't it possible that because you're different, I mean, if you really are different, that you're not seeing things right. That's the point. What's the point? The point is there's no right or wrong. It's just different. Then why are you trying to change the way I think? I'm not. Oh, come on. Yes, you are. You don't explain. You just judge my shit and don't say you don't. You oh, do that. No, come on. No, that's a very, very interesting way to put it. Now, maybe you're on to something. Maybe. But I'm just trying like hell to expand your mind. Yeah, well... You ever think that I don't need expansion? Anthony, everybody needs that. No, not everybody. Because <laughs> if we're all different and nothing's wrong or right, then maybe I just can't expand the way you the way you can. I can't answer that. I mean, Anthony, everybody has the power to expand their minds and their experience in life. Right. Everybody. Yes, but Tony. Does everybody really need to? I, I can't answer that. And neither can I. And because of that, I, I feel like, you know, I've expanded. Well, 
that's probably too much coffee. Nah. Ah. <laughs> you, uh, you gonna be okay with this? Nope, <laughs> but I accept it because that's what Pop wanted. Well, you know, I never accepted something because it's what Pop wanted. You're a better man than me. Ah. Uh, oh, that's not a joke. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I thought because you said you're a better man than forget about it. Extreme unction. The D'Antonio kitchen is empty except for moving boxes, tape, and labels, and one chair. The answering machine is beeping frantically. Anthony enters and Hits the answering machine. Nine messages. I just it was out half an hour. Come on. Anthony, um, I just want to confirm that the closing is tomorrow at 9 a.m. sharp. I have to get a substitute, and Vinny is coming with me. Yeah, now yeah, now you're bringing her. So I just want to commend you on your behavior the last six months. You'll see, Anthony, it, it, it's going to be great. It, it, yeah, it's going to be great for you because you got a lot of money coming your way. It's going to be so good. And you'll, you'll move into your house and you'll have some cash in your pocket to invest in maybe another piece of property. Anyway, I'll leave here around 6 a.m. to beat the traffic. And I'll see you at Uber Realty at 9 sharp. And oh, Anthony, Anthony, does Palazzo's make the crumbs on Wednesdays? I've been telling Vinny and she's dying to try some. So uh, bring a half a dozen to the real estate office. Yeah, then I got to buy the rent for the whole office. Because maybe you should get enough for the whole office for, for, for a coffee break. Oh, yeah, Miss uh, Big big Rock. Uh, anything else you need? And, uh, one more thing. I, I think it's time you change Pop's outgoing message. Well, you change your ass. I've been doing enough changing around here. Oh, okay, kiddo. See you tomorrow. Anthony, it's Uncle Philly. Listen, I, I know you got the closing tomorrow, but the town of Tawaka is giving us a problem on the paving job over at Fountains of Wayne. Don't you know uh, uh, the building inspector over there from trade school, something like that? Maybe he can stop them from fucking with us. The asphalt shows up at seven in the morning, for Christ's sake. Anthony, it's me, Kathy. I need to talk to you about window treatments for the house. Do you like blinds or curtains? Personally, I prefer blinds. Yeah, no kidding. There's more privacy, and I don't want you to have to go drilling holes in the wall for the valance and all. That's my girl. Anyway, could you leave a message on our new number? I mean, if you care one way or another, and maybe I'll get to see you tonight before 11. I love you. Yeah, but what about kids? Do you love kids, huh? Anthony, um, <clears throat> this is Gamata Claire. I don't know if you remember me from the Bronx. Um, I used to come out there to Jersey when you first moved out there. You was little. Come on. You got to keep talking. Huh? You got to keep talking or the machine's going to cut you off. Anthony, what the hell? This is Gamata Claire, again, from the Bronx. I used to come visit. Ma, he knows. Tell him. Huh? Tell him. Oh. Oh, oh, okay. Listen, I got a bunch of calls from your Aunt Lena and that pain in the ass, Millie. They were asking me why. Ma, please. This is long distance. I am, god damn ya. Ugh. All right, so Anthony, the roast, the roast. Your Nona and I used to share a place on Bure Avenue when we first came over. Ma! I'm trying, Cristo. All right, so I'm supposed to tell you that the reason that your grandma cut off the ends of the roast was because we couldn't fit it in the oven. The oven was too small. Thank you all very, very much. Uh, if everybody could come back. And great, let me bring the, thank you guys. Um, bring you, great, Gina, you can unmute yourself. Um, and thank you to our, our wonderful audience that stayed, because I know we went a little longer than, uh, than 60 minutes for our act two. Just a long act too. So, um, but thank you guys so, so much. Uh, before we get going, I've just a few things that I would love to say. Hopefully everybody can hear me okay. 
Um, and that is, first off, I want to um, thank- You got me blocked. What's that? You got me blocked. Oh, I have you blocked. That's Peter. I Tom. 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 Anthony, what's Tom. the matter with you? Oh, my, what's the matter with you? <laughs> Forget about it. Come on. Forget about it. All right. Um, first of all, this was um, putting up two acts uh, on this brand new platform was a lot. So I really want to thank Peter and especially this cast. We put a lot of effort into over these last few weeks. So it was a lot of work. So thank you guys. Uh, Gina Acosta, Tom Alper, Jack Kaler, Candy Tribuco, and Herb Mendelson as our Joe McClone who's in today. Uh, Peter Honorati, thank you again for your words and your story. Peter, I still don't have your video. Um, uh, I also want to thank, we had a bunch of voiceovers today. I want to thank Lou Sandoval, Christine Blackburn, Lisa Robbins, and her daughter, Renata. You all did a great job, and thank you for coming to my rescue in a very short period of time. So um, that was really just fantastic. Um, there's all sorts of chats that are coming in. Dave Field, I'm going to go to you, and we'll see how long we could actually go um, before everybody just uh, has to go out to dinner. So... Dave, do, do you have me? Um, I need to unmute you. Dave, can you unmute yourself? Dave? Lisa, you want to come try to say hello to Peter? Dave, <laughs> <Hey, Peter. laughs> myself? There we go. There we go. You're here. Dave, you're here. Hey, watching this show has convinced me that the bond that holds the family together is its inability to communicate. Well done. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks so much. Oh, that's great. Um, <laughs> all right. I am going to hang on one second. Um, anybody has any thoughts? Otherwise, we're going to, depending on any of your comments, um, we may just rifle through this in, in five minutes or so, but let me read a couple. Um, Jim, 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 I got you. Can you un unmute yourself? Jim Fothergill. Go for it. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, everybody. Great performance. Excellent. Uh, this is the fifth one I've seen of the smartphone theater. It gets better and better every week. Oh, thank you, Jim. Thank you, cousin Jimmy. <laughs> oh, that's great. Keep Thanks. going. We really appreciate it. Um, yeah, yeah it, it's, it's really great. And, um, I think, uh, you know, as much work as it actually takes, and it is a completely new kind of medium, um, I think everybody walks away with a smile. You know, I've gotten uh, both audience and, and uh, actors, you know, it's, which was the intention. So thank you very, very much. Thank uh, you. Let's see here. I've got, Zali says, kudos to all the stage managers, all those props worked. <laughs> um, <laughs> I loved it. Devin wants to know, what was it like to work with so many props? Uh, I'm going to ask, um, you know, anybody wants to throw in? Tom and Gina, you had a lot of props. Herb, Herb you had a lot of props, too. It was a freaking nightmare. No, I'm just <laughs> it, it, it was fun, but um, it's, it's a good thing that we rehearsed it a, a few times. So um, it, it, it definitely added more. I mean, it definitely felt like it, it, it kept everyone sort of, you know, in the moment. Like, I, I really felt like it was... Um, it added life. And yeah, it. this form can get to be a bunch of talking heads. And if you actually let us do stuff with it, it's, uh, it's much more inspiring to the actors. Yeah, Gina had a lot of great ideas for some of these props. So I don't want to take the credit. That, that was, yeah. <laughs> it was great. OK, we're going to go to Assad. Assad, I'm unmuting you. Assad, I just you're on. had a quick. Um, a quick congratulations to everybody. Again, wonderful work. It's good to be able to um, to see this kind of effort. So commendations to everyone. Peter, the play plays beautifully, reads beautifully, privately, and when I hear it with actors. So just a big, um, a big commendation to everyone. Great work. Thank you. Thank you, Assad. Thank you, Assad. Thank you. Okay, we are going to go to Mitch Paradise, and I'm praying that it works this time. Let's see. Mitch. Oh, <laughs> oh no. Mitch, he's, he's a little guy. 
<laughs> it's not, you have to something know. about your computer or your phone that just won't let you connect through Zoom. Oh, <laughs> just, <laughs> it just doesn't work. Oh my God. We'll talk later and make it work. Okay. Uh, I'm going to Zully. Hey, let's go here. Stuart Zully, I'm working on it. Zully, go for it. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> Only kidding. Peter, Peter Onorati, fantastic. I got bad news for you. I want you to turn this into a TV series. <laughs> all these people are fantastic. All these characters are great. Uh, the Fountains of Wayne, scum spotting your relatives, decapitating a host. This stuff is fantastic. I just, I just loved it. And, and like last week, saw all the love between that uh, brother and sister. It's just, um, it's really, really rich, you know. Hopefully they're gonna open up a theater next week and you guys can do it because you're ready to go. It was terrific. It was really, really great. Oh, thanks. I didn't hear any of that. So somebody send me an email. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't hear anything. Jeanette's computer stopped on me. Oh, oh. Peter, I said, I said turn it into a TV series. <laughs> if you can't write at all, just hire a bunch of writers. Everybody's sitting around now. And, uh, I never worked with my wife. <laughs> you, got some, you got some great characters. It turned into a TV series. You know, uh, Uncle Philly there with the glasses off your ears. It was like Uncle Junior in The Sopranos. I mean, I love that. And passing the crumb buns and the eyeglasses through the screen. That stuff was great. All these little, little things were just great. It just, <laughs> it just popped, popped. It really, there it is. It just popped. You guys, I think you guys must have had three or four weeks of rehearsal. I mean, it was beautiful. Uh, three or four weeks, actually. <laughs> hey, it was wonderful. Take it, take it from this Jew over here. That was fantastic. <laughs> Great. Thank you, Stuart. All right, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Um, David Franco left a message that says, that was spot on. I live... I live in some variation of that every day. Well done. <laughs> David Franco. Um, uh, I'll just read a few more, then we'll, we'll probably call it a day. Um, lovely work, thanks. Hard work pays off. Lisa Richards, the rehearsal was so definitely worth it, and the behavior really helped. Great work. Um, Kelly Koenig says, bravo. It's so fun to hear the Jersey accents. Um, Mitch Paradise loves Millie. Millie, you wound up helping a lot. We loved you. Uh, uh, let's see, Tom, you ate a lot. Millie was a star. That came from Christine. Christine, thank you again for your voiceover. Um, Shirley Snyderman, fun family. You captured them very well. Uh, love the glasses. Tom and Gina were perfect siblings. Sharon Shane says, fabulous work by everyone. I love this play. Feels like home. Can't wait for the next installment. Everyone was just wonderful. Um, do it again. Guys, come scouting your relatives and decapitating a roast. Yay. Wonderful performances, just fantastic. All right, lots of kudos. Luckily, Zoom records all of this chat, so I will send this to our cast and I'll send this to Peter as well. Um, if anybody doesn't have any more comments, because we're going on 20 after six, so it's wow. been a nice long day. If anybody wants to chime in from, the, from our cast. Oh, we have, a, we have a tip jar. You're more than welcome to jump on the tip, tip jar. For anybody in our audience, um, you'll find that on the website, which is smartphonetheater.com. Um, other than that, Cast, do you guys have anything that you want to chime in? Yeah, it, it was great working with all you guys. And I, and I hope soon to, to meet you in person one day and actually. I agree. The room. Yes. It was an amazing experience and it was bizarre, but incredible. And you guys are all fantastic. And After the it. war. It's so Thank bizarre. You, Thank, Thank you, Todd. Thanks for Thank taking me on the ride. Thanks for all the hard work, yes, everybody. Thank you so much, Great. Uh, thank you, guys. Yeah, it was such a pleasure. It was such a pleasure. I wish we had a cast party right now. So um, <laughs> I'm having one. <laughs> <laughs> all right, party of chucks. All right, cool. Um, guys, I'm just going to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you to our audience very much. Thank you, for, Peter Bonarotti. Thank you so much. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Peter. Uh, Thanks, Gina. Terrific. Peter, yeah, terrific, really. Week. 
Terrific. We have two shows next week, so everybody come back next week. And, um, you know, thank you guys. Uh, cast, I'm going to call you, <clears throat> I'm going to call you guys in about five minutes so we can do a wrap up. So check your email for a link. All right. No we'll do a rehearsal. No, <laughs> no more rehearsals. But anybody we else, have, I want to say thank you very much. <laughs> thank Bye you guys. Everybody. I'm going to go later. drink heavy. <laughs> Bye. All right. Bye-bye, everybody. Thank you, Peter. Bye.